Not long ago, I reviewed a couple of flashlights from the company Hoto. Well, now I have another light from Hoto. This is the Duo. If you're interested in seeing what's unique about this light, keep watching. All right, before we begin, I'd like to thank Hoto for sending me the Duo so that I could share it with you. As always, we'll go down to the tabletop. I'll go over the key features for this light. I'll go over its performance and physical specifications as well as its modes of operation. Then, of course, we'll do some testing. Just before we take a closer look at the Duo, let me share with you what it came with. So it came in this very simple box, just a picture on the outside of the light inside of the box just a couple of items one being the USB type C charging cable the operating manual and warranty and that's it believe it or not okay because everything else is attached to the light and I'm going to go over this a little bit at a time because it's quite a complex light in the sense that, that there are so many different features and how they integrate together. So let's start with what's wrapped around the outside because I'm sure that's drawn your attention. This is a two-purpose item. It is a large piece of Velcro, the attachment on the outside, and a sliding bar that has a couple of functions. All right, so let's just talk about this for a second. Its secondary function is holding this bar to the side of the light. And I say secondary because its primary function, believe it or not, and I'll see if I can't demonstrate it, is to be able to hold the flashlight to something else, like a tent pole or a anything, I guess, that you can wrap this around because it has some diameter to you. I'll demonstrate again how that works. It's got a tertiary function, which is to act as a bit of a light shade over this side light. And this is part of the design. There are two ways this light operates. It has an LED, obviously, in the forward end, and then it has this side light with LEDs inside of it. Now, even this has two functions, and I'll talk more about that in a second. So some of the other key features to look at besides the fact that it does have a flashlight and a side light is that it has an integrated carabiner, which is spring-loaded and magnetic, so it's got some strength, just enough, obviously, to attach it and let it hang from anything like a guy line in under a tarp or inside of a tent or, I guess, just about anywhere else. The other thing it has on the side here is a magnetic bar that runs down this length of it here and you can also see the USB type C charging port here but it is that medic magnetic bar that allows you to attach this to unique places so if you're working maybe underneath the engine bonnet of a car or under your sink like I have recently trying to fix a small leak then this is nice in that it can mount upwards or at any angle really and then you can use the work light application on this side now let me just put this back together to show you how how it would function for wrapping around something. So I, how does this go again? All right, this way, if so, of course. So um, the bar itself would attach over that area on the side here and be attached magnetically like this. And if we were to imagine that my finger was a pole in a tent, then we could wrap this around the side and now it would hold on to the pole in the tent or again, anything, any other tubular type thing that you can wrap this around and it would hold there quite well for functioning. So it gives you the option to be able to attach it to things that are non-magnetic, let's just aluminum tent poles, and, and still be able to use it mounted in unique ways to get the light that you require. All right, let's go over the physical specifications for the Hoto Duo. So it has an overall length of seven and three quarters inches, which is 196 millimeters. It it has a diameter of the light itself at one and three eighths inches or 35 millimeters. That does not include the uh, wrap and bar on the side. And it has a weight of 6.84 ounces, which is 194 grams. All right, now we'll go over the performance specifications. And as you can see, I moved the wrap so that you'll be able to see the light in operation in a minute. Now, I mentioned a minute ago that it has multiple functions in that it has a flashlight from the front, a work light from the side, but it also has what Hoto refers to as a mood light. And I'll give you the description of each as we go through. So the flashlight has a low setting of 50 lumens, which will go, run for 30 hours and has a beam cast of 40 meters. 
a medium setting of 300 lumens, which will last for six hours, and has a beam cast of 120 meters, and it has a high setting of 1,000 lumens, which will run for four hours without step down, and have a beam cast of 210 meters. It does have a strobe, which also runs at 1,000 lumens, running for two hours, which, strangely enough, they give the beam cast of 210 meters, and it has an SOS mode, which has a lumen setting of 30 and will run for 80 hours with a beam cast of 20 meters. Now, the side light itself, first off, it has a white light of uh, that will run on low of 30 lumens for 30 hours, and I'm not sure why they would include a beam cast of three meters, but they have. But this side light, the work light portion, also runs on high for 200 lumens and running for six hours and a 10 meter beam cast. Interestingly, it has a flashing red mode, which they don't give a lumen setting for, but do say that it will run for 48 hours and a flashing yellow mode, which again, no lumen setting, but a runtime of 36 hours with one more switch or around on the basal. And I'll show that and demonstrate it in a minute. In a minute, you turn over to the mood light. Now the mood light has four different settings in and of itself. So it has just a warm yellow light of 120 lumens, which will run for 10 hours. And again, the beam cast eight meters. It has a breathing light, which is to say that same warm light will increase and decrease of its own. They do not give a lumen setting for that, but they do say it will run for 24 hours. And it has a campfire setting. And I guess the best way to describe that before demonstrating is it kind of looks like a flickering uh, campfire flame. And again, in the yellow light, and that will run for 12 hours. One last thing that it has, it has a color changing mode. So it constantly runs through a sequence of color changes and that will run for 12 hours. All right, let's go through the operation of the Hoto Duo. So let's start with the basics. And that is right here on the basal, you'll see three little icons indicating where the light will be emitting from. In this icon, it'll be emitting from the end. And in the next two icons, it'll be emitting from the side. So that's just simply achieved by rotating the bezel to the icon they want to use. But of course, we'll start off with the flashlight. Now, uh, you turn the light on and off simply enough, of course, with the button right here. And when you turn it on, you'll notice right away that the button itself does indicate green, and that's a battery strength indicator. So it'll run from green to red to flashing red. So when it gets to red or flashing red, you'll know it's time to uh, recharge the light. Now, it, when you first press the button on, the light emits in low setting. If you press it again, it goes to a medium setting. And if you press it again, it goes to the high setting. Press it one more time and you turn the light off. Now, the unfortunate thing is that when you press the button again, you have to run through the sequence of low, medium, and high. There is no memory for the last uh, setting used. Now, let's just rotate the the basal one point to the uh, work light mode. So in work light, when I turn it on, I see I don't want to blind you with this. If I turn the light on, you can see it has a low setting, which is somewhat quite white. And in fact, it's a white light. Press it again, and it has a high setting. When I press it again, it has the flashing red setting. And when I press it again, it has the flashing yellow setting. All right, let's turn the light off. Now we'll just run it all the way over to the mood setting. Now, when I turn the light on, you can see it's distinctly yellow, a much cooler light than any of the work light or flashlight uh, settings are. So that's where you get there. If I press it again, this was where you'll get that infinity type setting with the uh, uh, yellow light on the side. It just goes up and down continuously. As you can see, if I press it again, this is where you get the campfire mode. Now I will turn the, or you should be able to see that happening. It has more of an effect in the darkness there. Good, the camera's starting to uh, compensate for the brightness and you can see what I mean. Reminiscent of a campfire flame or a candle flame, I guess, if you will. And if I press it one more time, this is where it goes into the color change. And it will have gone from yellow to green to blue to purple. And I think next might be red, oh no, pink. Okay, pink. 
and then into red and back to yellow. Doing some nighttime testing for the Hoto Duo of the flashlight. So I have my camera aimed at a garage three doors up or three houses up from me and I'm going to start the flashlight off in low. You can see the edge of my house, the neighbor's house, and then the garage, as I said, about 70 or 80 feet away. Let's take it up to the next level. So not bad, actually. This is actually quite a good flashlight. There is a distinct a spotlight in the center, but it moves into the floodlight, which is considerable quite easily. And let's take it up to the last one. Lots of light in the backyard here. All right, let's wrap this video up with a few pros and cons for the Hodo Duo. So what do I really like about this light? Multifunctional, is that the best way to use the word? In addition to the three lighting modes, which we'll talk about in a second, it is its mounting modes, I think, which also set this aside. It has the carabiner, which is quite strong and quite effective on the end of it. And it has this wrap that you can use to mount it to things like tent poles, as I mentioned a minute ago. And it also has the integrated magnet, which again allows you to mount that on ferrous or, or metal objects that will are magnetic in nature. Now, as far as the lighting mode goes, the flashlight is actually quite an effective light. At 1,000 lumens on high, it has a good amount of flood, but it has a strong amount of uh, a spotlight as well. So a good combination between the two. I do also like the work, or work lights on the side in that the it has, again, a white light, and it has a low and a high. And being able to mount that magnetically or, or using the wrap itself, it uh, gives me a, quite a functional, quite a versatile work light. Now, something I would not have looked for in a flashlight was the mood modes. I don't know. I'm not sure these are things that I would use very often, but you know, they're kind of unique and they really don't detract from the light in that they don't, there, there is no extra weight or functionality that's detracted from the light by having those there. So would I use them? Maybe once in a while just to be, you know, something a little different, a little distraction, I guess, when you're out in a tent. That's about the only thing I can see doing with them. Are there any downsides to this light? Well, there are a few. Number one, it's a fairly big light and that's because of all the different features it has and as well as the carabiner and the wrap and everything else on the end of it. One thing I didn't mention about this light is that the battery is non-accessible and non-replaceable. So that definitely is a con for many, many people. I have no idea what the lifespan of this battery will be. Uh, but, you know, it would be much better, in my opinion, if you could put a, a replacement battery in this. And at this time, I don't see any way of doing it. Something that is not so much of a con, I just think it's, I'm not quite sure why they even included this. And there is no way that you can consider this a tactical flashlight. I don't even think you could press it into being a tactical flashlight. But in their description of the components, they refer to the crenellations on the end, as shallow as they are, as tactical in application. I can't see that, but I will say they're sharp and I don't particularly like that at all. Not so sharp they're gonna cut me, but just unnecessary because I cannot imagine carrying this on, and for any reason that I may end up using it as an impact weapon where the sharpness would come into play. So I think they were would be better off uh, not having those sharp on the edges and not refer to them as uh, tactical in nature. Okay, so that's all I have for you on the Hoto Duel, but of course what I'll do is put the links as as well as all the information I gave you in the video description below. But of course, if you have any questions or comments on this light, then please put those in the comment section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.